Hello everyone, my name is JBR and welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet. So this time, I'm going to start off with some classes since I'm already here. So we're going to do some math. <gasps> time! Rhyme sister! Oh, it all makes sense now. That's why they looked alike too. Yeah. Hello everyone, well done on the midterm exam. Some of you earned perfect scores. Others seem to have a bit of trouble. I can tell that you all tried your best. Quite pleased to say that every last one of you passed. I can only assume that this means you have all come to love numbers. Stay sharp and try your best for the rest of my classes too. Speaking of staying sharp, do you know how the word applies to Pokemon battles? That's right, it has to do with stat boosts. Pokemon stats can rise and fall throughout the course of battle, correct? Well, if a Pokemon uses the move Work Up, its attack and special attack stats will rise by one stage each. As you may know, each time a Pokemon's attack or special attack rises one stage, moves affected by that stat will deal 50% more damage. Huh. That same Pokemon from a, our previous example were to use Work Up again, if its attack and special attack will have risen by two stages total, it results in a 100% increase to damage dealt making its moves twice as strong. Sword Stance, on the other hand, boosts attack by two stages at once, allowing the Pokemon to deal double damage after just a single use. So using Sword Dance twice would boost the Pokemon's attack stat by four stages. How much more damage, then, would this Pokemon deal? Uh, that's, um, misleading. So it would do triple normal damage, but it would do double damage more. Oh, that's great. You answer this difficult question with ease, Jerebra. Each stage that a Pokemon it, attacker special attack stat is raised increases its damage by 50%. So being raised four stages would result in a 4 times 50% or 200% increase. Base damage of a move is 100%, so adding 200% to that gives us 300. In other words, the next move the Pokemon uses will deal triple damage, and it only took three turns to do it. Type matchups, critical hit damage, and other factors all play into these calculations as well. So even a small boost must be taken seriously. By the way, if a stat simply rose, that means it has gone up by one stage. If it rose sharply, that's two stages. If it rose drastically, that's three stages. So you know the X attack and X special attack items, which I've never used in a battle in my 20 some years of playing Pokemon, can only be used in battle to sharply boost those respective stats. Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. Today's lesson was a little difficult, so be sure to review what you learned in order to stay sharp. I'll see you all again next class. Alright, that's good, because I don't really... I don't use non-damaging attacks. I didn't realize they gave a 50% boost. That's a lot. Or a hundred percent boost. That's a real lot. Hello everyone, let's have a fun class today. Did you make sure to review last class's materials in order to stay sharp? I know it was a little difficult with all the talk of multiplication percentages and the like. Today we'll be talking about percentages again to learn about probability. We sound like we're going to have another difficult class. Did you know that all of you already deal with probability on a regular basis? Pokemon moves generally have a property called accuracy, which determines the probability that they will hit. The accuracy of tackle is 100 or 100%. So if you were to use tackle 100 times, you could expect it to hit all 100 times. Move Hypnosis, which puts opponents to sleep, has an accuracy of 60, or 60%. That means you could expect it to hit 60 times in 100 uses. But another way, out of 100 uses, you could expect it to miss 40 times. Many of the truly powerful moves often tend to have lower accuracy. So when you're deciding whether to go slow and steady with moves that are sure to hit, or hard and fast with stronger but less accurate moves, you're already studying probabilities. Let me see here. Perhaps Surf and Hydro Pump would be good examples for this suggestion. Surf has a power of 90, its accuracy is 100, meaning you can expect it to hit every time. Hydro Pump's accuracy is only 80, 
but when it hits, its power is 110. So between Surf and Hydro Print, which move would you want to use yourself? Ah, depends on the situation, but Surf is statistically better given those two snares. Oh my, so you're always considering various possibilities, Jerry may have made it sound like there was a correct answer here, but there's not. You're free to use any moves you wish. Factors like PP or number of targets hit may make some moves more suited for certain situations. However, trading accuracy for power or vice versa is purely a matter of preference. This Surf vs. Hydro Pump debate has been ongoing for quite some time. Personally, I'm more invested in debating the rock type moves, rock slide and stone edge. Let me tell you, I could get really worked up about the those moves, but oh my, there's the bell, what a shame. Next class will be the last of our time together, so show up 100% ready to go. I wonder, I'm assuming these are all the topics that are possible, the ones that are currently available. Yep. Oh wait, this is the last class, and then the final. Right? Hello everyone, I hope we can have fun once again today for our last class together. Last time we learned about probability using move accuracy as an example. Probability is quite an interesting subject. Did you know that in a class of 40 students, there's a 90% chance that two of them will have the same birthday? This is true even despite the fact that there are over 300 days each year. Isn't that remarkable? Well, let's move on to today's topic before we get swept along with probability again. I've been teaching you all how to calculate damage in this type in this class using examples like type matchups, critical hits, stat boosts, and the like. All those variables are multiplied together to calculate damage dealt to an opponent. However, did you know that there is an even simpler way to increase the damage of your Pokemon's moves? All you have to do is have your Pokemon use a move it shares a type with. Okay, so stab. If a rock type Pokemon uses the rock type move Stone Edge, the move's base power of 100 is multiplied by 1.5 to 150. Ground and rock may seem like similar types, but if a ground type Pokemon uses Stone Edge, the move's power will remain 100. Super effective moves and critical hits also add multipliers onto this little numerical increase, so it most certainly must not be taken lightly. Let me ask you a question to see if you understand what I'm talking about here. Say you have a move with a power of 100. A Pokemon that shares a type with this move, uses it, it's an opponent that is weak to that type. What happens to that move's power? Alright, so... It gets the 50% stab bonus. And it's super effective, which means it does double, so it's 300. You did that calculation all in your head? Well done, Yager, bro. First, using a move that shares a type with its user multiplies the move's base power by 1.5, making it 150. The fact that the opponent is weak to the move's type then doubles that power from 150 to 300. The original power of the move ends up being tripled. Isn't that amazing? What's more, if a Pokemon Terra slices and its Terra type matches one of its original types, then the bonus it gets for using a move of that same type increases from 1.5 to 2. Of course, being able to use a lot of moves with different types is great as well. So, if I Terra slice a Pokemon, like my Eggbert, so he's fire to fire, and then he uses a fire attack on someone who's weak to fire. Gets a four times boost? No wonder I wreck. That's one way you can surprise your opponents. In the end, your own innate characteristics are what will really let you shine the most. Bear in mind that this is true for both humans and Pokemon. Sure would make me happy if you could take those words to hurt. So as I should really have shared this basic advice right from our first lesson. My apologies. Just like that, class is over. Us of our time together flew by in the blink of an eye. So much fun to be able to teach all the, you eager students about numbers. Next class will be our fun final exam. Be sure to review the material well in preparation.
Alright, so we got a final and then we're off to gym battle somewhere. Alright everyone, it's time to begin our final exam. I'm sure the fun experience you all had in my class will serve you well as you answer. How many great balls could you purchase for 3,000 if each one costs 600? You can buy five. The water type move with power of 100 lands a crit on a grass type. What will the move's power? Um, if, oh wait, water. So you get a critical hit on a not effective type. 75? Normal conditions, what percentage chance does Stone Edge have to land a critical hit? About 4%. Pokemon uses Sword Dance twice to boost its attack by force stage. How much damage towards physical moves then do? Triple damage. A rock type Pokemon whose Terra type is rock, Terra slices, what will the power of its rock type move be multiplied to? Toe. Alright, right. go, do go and ask for your scores at the front desk and then take a nice break. Come on. I can't fail math. Feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your result. You need four correct to pass the finals. I can't get them all right. Alright, give me my medium candies. I'm out of here. So, I was kind of thinking, um, if I'm heading to the fairy gym, oh wait, they're weak to poison also. So, let me see what TMs I have, because uh, I wish sort by I wish I could sort them by type poison okay no one can learn acid um, poison tail is poison tail a good move uh, it's an okay move better than head but I probably should have kept scrolling before I set it on one. Smart strike. Alright, I can't learn that. Toxic spikes? Nope. Flash cannon? Nope. Gunk shot? Nope. There's the. Yeah, my team is not, as with most things, my team is not built to take on fairy types. Alright, so that's the gym. Fly here. Yep. Alright, so I guess I need to put my... That cobra snake. Solid snake? Snake fang? No. Solid fang? Okay, I didn't press R, I pressed X. I don't know why he did that. Are there any TMs that I can make? That looks like. Where's Steel? Iron Defense? Mm, yeah, thanks.
Heal me, Nurse Joy. I'm thinking... So I'm going to end up taking my... I'm going to have to use my top three. So... I want it to be those ones. Because I... What, what attacks do you have? Oh wait, no, I don't want the dragon. That's, that's a dumb idea. Actually, I think... I think Ghost is fine. I just don't think I want a, a dark type. Ooh, chances. Right here's the entrance. Is it a gold duck? gonna run over and grab that item. I will return later when it is time for the young master's piano lesson. Till then, please give him my regards. Y yes Mr. Harrington. Hmm? And who might you be, young man? Friend of the young master, perhaps? Uh, no. Ah, I see. As you seem unaware, I must inform you that this is the base of Team Star's ferry crew. The Rookba squad led by young Master Ortega. Oh, Mr. Harrington, I don't think we're supposed to be giving out that information. No? Then please accept my apologies. Do you have any idea as to who this young man might be? He's no friend of ours. I think he might be here to try and take us on. Understood. In that case, I take it you're an adversary of the young master. Uh, I guess that follows. So, so, well then, that leaves me with one last thing to ask you. Huh? Would you be so kind as to indulge me in a quick battle? Sure. Splendid, then let us begin. Challenge by Pokemon Trainer Harrington. It is more. Ugh, God, I hate it. But this will at least tell me. Oh, I just need to know. Yeah, so Poison Tail is the only thing that's super... Alright, is anyone else... Fairy? This... He needs more attacks. I don't know... I... Yeah, I... I'm... After this battle, I'm gonna fix that. Ah, shit, he's strong. Oh, 48. Metal Gear out. I've never seen one, so. Ah, oh, I can't use the same move again. I guess bulldoze it. Oh, Brutal Swing, don't do that, you idiot. Wait. Oh, it's Psychic. Oh, well. Outstanding performance. However, be aware that young Master Ortega's battle prowess far surpasses my paltry skills. You would do well to take care. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hasta la vista. <laughs> that gentlemanly guy used to be the director of the academy, I think. At least that's what I heard. Now he's, like, tutoring the boss or something? Shows up here sometimes to take the boss to his lessons. Hang on, why am I explaining this to you? There's no doubting you're here to make trouble, so I got to let everyone know. Hasta la vista.
Where's the top top tower? I see the goat has been dealt with. Good job. That base belongs to Team Star's fairy crew, Rookbar squad. Their boss Ortega is the mechanic of the team. Maybe the youngest of the bosses, but his battle skills are no joke. Underestimate him and things will go south for you quickly. He's also a real lead from the back type. Gets his grunt to do all the dirty work for him. But his weak point is his short fuse. Get him good and angry and he'll march out to the front line to deal with you himself. In terms of tactic, there's nothing else for it but to take down all the lackeys he sends your way. Tough it out until Ortega shows up and go from there. And the bell in the gates once you're ready to not kick off this phase of the operation. Time to wipe the root bar squad off the map. Great ball. Alright, now I need to teach my Scrooge some moves. Alright, Shadow. Can you learn any non ghost moves? Alright, Rock. I'll take that. Rest now. Now. Ah, I wanted to teach him avalanche. That'd be cool. All right. Man, this. Okay, you can learn thief, I guess, and that tracks. So. Ah, confuse ray. Nope, not boxes. I want to heal him up. Oh, I guess I guess I could heal like as soon as I'm inside, because there's plenty of the, the little things that you can machines that you can just run up to and they'll heal you. Beep, kush. Code red, code red, Operation Starfall Alert. Everyone get into position, defend the boss with all you got. Rest assured, intruder, we'll deal with you without the boss's help. Unless you manage to beat 30 of our Pokemon in 10 minutes, that is. Good luck with that. Alright, defeat 30 Pokemon. You guys froze. I think you're cheating. Take out Gardevoir. Some Merrells over here. Alright, didn't lose a single one of those fights, so that's a good sign. Our defenses are breached. It's all up to the boss now. These tires don't really spin. Boss of Team Star's Fairy Crew, Ortega. 
Huh, so you're Yerbra. Okay. Talk about underwhelming. I was expecting someone, I don't know, a little more beefed up. Whatever. I don't care who you are. Not like I'm gonna lose to you anyway. If you think fairy types are all about cuteness, you're in for a nasty surprise. Right. Challenged by Ortega of Team Star. I think I promise I'll play nice, so don't blame me when this battle sends you blubbering back home. I'm worried my Metal Gears. I've never faced an Azumarill. Huh. Ah, shit, that's just gonna make me rock. Or ground. Hmm. Oh well. This is Metal Gears. Time to shine. Super effective, but it did not do enough damage. It's not a strong attack. Send out Wigglytuff, will you switch your Pokemon? No. Man, I haven't fought a Wigglytuff either. At least, can you poison one of these things? Thank you. Little Gear fell in love. Oopsie, did you just realize how outmatched you are? You wanna give up, now's the time. So this is a... Okay, so... Uh, that's right, all of his attacks are physical. So I'm going to do something that I've never done. I'm gonna use... An X attack. Fuck you! I raised my attack one. I used an item one time. Motherfucker. The only thing that actually happened in that round is I used, I wasted an item, and Wigglytuff got hurt by poison. Now, will he hit if he fell in love? Or is it just like a chance of missing? So now my Metal Gear should have a 50% stat, 50% attack boost for the rest of the battle. And since it's super effective, it, I should be doing 300% normal damage. I think. Ah, that's triple damage? Have a taste of this slick move. Bet you can't hit on my Pokemon's adorable strain. Play rough. You know, 
I can just heal. I need my, my 80 health, but we'll just do one super potion. That's why gym fights are easy. They don't use healing items anymore. Interesting choice. Oh, my fucking attack stat. Asshole. that I've used three and I'm only plus one attack in this fight. And Dachshund goes to sleep. And he's, oh, that's right, a river room. What the heck? Why is my team on the ropes? He's, that's totally not fair. This swirled the battlefield. Hmm. Alright, Poison Tail. Magical Torque. Alright, 30... 25 points. Hmm. Not much. Steel... Okay, that's... Oh, that wasn't super effective? Hmm. Okay. If I could poison him, I have this battle cinched. Okay, Confuse Ray is a problem. Just poison him and we can win this. Poison- ah, you didn't poison the car. One more attack, probably. Uh, 31 damage. As long as, even if I hit myself, I should be fine, but hitting him would be cool. Poison him. Why can't you poison this car? Please don't hit yourself, because... Ooh, 37. Don't hit yourself. And we- I think we win if- Yay! Opposing Reverend Room fainted! How could I lose? What the heck? About a year and a half ago. Ah, what the heck? Your toy car didn't budge an inch, huh? I told you it's not a toy. It's called the Star Mobile, and I was up all night building it. The problem's clearly that we're not giving it enough juice. You designed this thing to be powered by two car cadet but it's just too heavy ah that's such a shame i wanted to see the look on our bullies faces once we got it moving i'm sorry i really thought it would work come good fellow tis no occasion for melancholy why to make such a remarkable contraption by thine own hand genius thy name is ortega yeah well there's no point if it doesn't work is there if i knew all that effort would have zero payout I'd have just asked Mother to buy a car for us. 
See, this is why people don't take you seriously. You say some stupid things, you know that? What? No, look cool, would you? Yeah, how about no? I mean, we even put this in the code for crying out loud. When we started Team Star, we swore to quit relying on our parents or bags of cash to fix our problems for us. Did you forget? If that hunk of junk doesn't move, get it moving. If we're short on juice, just cr gotta crank up the power somehow. Don't take a genius, man. It's easy enough to say, Melly. Do you have an actual plan? Yep, I'm gonna train up my Char Cadet. Have them evolve. Their boosted firepower will get the Starmobile moving, no sweat. But the hour of Operation Star is nigh at hand. Will you succeed in time? Oh, I'll get it done. Melly, wait! <sighs> you know, Melly shoots her mouth off an awful lot, but she means well. I know. God, this sucks. Hey, language. This sucks. I hate myself for losing, but I also can't get over how awesome you were in that battle. If any of us squad bosses are defeated, that means we have to step down. Going against our code would make me a traitor to the team. Gah, fine. Not like I have a choice anyway. So take the bat already. You better treat it with the respect it deserves. Team Star's fairy crew defeated. I'm not done yet. Here's my favorite TM too. Feel free to marvel at how awesome it is. Dazzling gleam. Okay, cool. Just so you know, you are the worst, like the most annoying person ever. But I get it. You're super strong. I'll admit that much. You even busted up my Starmobile. Young Master Ortega. Mr. Harrington? I guess it's time for my piano lesson, huh? As it happens, I just lost my boss title, so I'm all good to head on home. Ah, actually, a different matter brought me. There's somebody I would like you to meet. He's a distant acquaintance of mine. The name's Clive. Okay. What's your business here? I want you to tell me something. You're the son of a wealthy family and heir to a major apparel company. So why join a group like Team Star? What a question to ask someone you've just met. Well, my answer is the same as everyone else in the team. It's because I was being bullied. So the Academy really did used to have an issue with bullying. Who would guess, right? School is all rainbows and butterflies these days. And the bullies from back then don't even go to the Academy anymore. Why? What happened to them? As the former director of the Academy, I believe I am best positioned to answer that question. Mr. Harrington. About 18 months ago, members of Team Star confronted the students who used to bully them. And an altercation broke out between the groups. Though it did not escalate into a major incident, the altercation nonetheless caused a scandal of hitherto unknown proportions. As a result of what occurred that day, the students who had prepared to bully dropped out of the academy, one after another. But, but there aren't any records of that anywhere in the academy. No, I should imagine not. My former deputy deleted all records of the incident, you see. What? Why would they, anyone do that? Just as I was puzzling over how best to deal with Team Star in the aftermath of the incident, a certain student came to me. The student declared that they would take all responsibility for the team's actions. In exchange, they requested that I exonerate the other students of Team Star from any blame. Huh? No, no one told me about that. I accepted the request and agreed not to take disciplinary action against Team Star. Then I assigned 18 months of overseas study to the student who took responsibility for the team. Huh? <gasps> 18 months? Well, that's now. A year and a half of studying abroad. This is not intended as a punishment, you understand. Team Star were the victims, after all. I wanted the student to take some time to rest, to have them return home to the Galar region, under the per pretext of overseas study. Around that time, however, the former deputy director took it upon himself to erase all traces of the incident from the Academy servers. It appeared his intent was to shield himself from any blame. So he tried to cover up the whole thing? That's terrible. After we discovered what we had, he had done, dealt with him appropriately, of course. The inability of myself and the rest of the teaching staff to prevent this terrible act also represented a grave blunder on our part. I accepted the blame that lay at my feet and resigned from my position as director. The rest of the teaching staff then joined me in handing in their notice. So that's why the current teachers were all brought in a year and a half ago. 
I understand my actions have caused you a great deal of trouble. You have my sincere apologies. Hang on, Mr. Harrington. How come you suddenly decide to talk about this now? Young Master Ortega, Team Star cannot carry on in its current fashion. I merely wish to give you a chance to chart a better course. Well, there's no way I'm abandoning my friends and going to school without them. Not after we've come this far. Your friends and Team Star must mean a great deal to you. Isn't that obvious? It's because, you know, they're my greatest treasure in the whole world. Alright, that's four eliminated. So we just have a fighting type and one Titan Pokemon left. Oh, that's right, and you know, we get to meet Penny. Yeah, here, bruh, it's me. I tell you that Ortega handed over his star badge to you then? I see. With its boss no longer around, the Root Bar Squad is as good as finished. Even Ortega. I'm sorry. We're almost there now. Just one boss left. Operation's been a huge success thanks to you, Yerba. Clive has also performed admirably at your support. Remember him saying that you're acquaintances? Have you known each other long? No, not that long. Well, he's clearly a reliable friend. He almost reminds me of the gang back in the day. Which gang? As you know, Team Star was formed by a group of students who were being bullied at school. Shortly after forming the team, these students, none other than the squad bosses themselves, confronted their bullies head on. The outcome was a resounding victory for Team Star, though you could hardly call it a contest. The bullies didn't even put up a fight. They all bolted from battle the first chance they got. Scared spitless, Team Star. The bullies then dropped out of school, one after another. Team Star ended up the villains of the story. But that's neither here nor there. Forget I mentioned it. Now, about your reward, I'll transfer some LP over to your phone as promised. You earned 10,000 LP. Now make more TMs. Make good use of those TMs. Should help you take down the last remaining boss. My supply unit rep will be along soon to give you your bonus reward. Um, here I am. Aki ass. Yeah, stay in your Pokeball for once, will you? Gross. It's a Pokemon. I don't... Wow, Team Star went through all that, huh? They just wanted the bullies to go away, but then they became the bad guys in everyone's eyes. What a joke. The students, the teachers, they're all so messed up. If even just one of them had been paying attention when everyone was getting bullied, they'd have been able to tell right away that Team Star wasn't the one in the wrong. I guess the big boss was the one who urged everyone to face their bullies, despite knowing how messed up the academy is. What a massive idiot, creating Team Star and just hoping their plan would miraculously work out. You really think? I'm sure of it. Well, here's your reward. Next boss is the very last one. We're counting on you, Jaeger bro. Alright. So, I think, you know, it's been a while since we've done a Titan one. So, I can... It's a pretty clear path, maybe... I'll probably just head back and just sail on over next time. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Pokemon Scarlet. Be sure to come back next time where we'll take on the false dragon titan. I'm excited to see what it is. Because I have no idea what it could be. As always, I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye!